you've been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was froze, still you love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I found no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found me. I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Snow wall you won't kick down, light you won't tear down, coming after me. Snow shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Snow wall you won't kick down, light you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending. Love of God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I found leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I try to win this war, I confess My hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So when all things be my life and breath, I want what you, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you You are my 
I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, today we are honored to have our adopted seminary student, Michael Stein, with us uh, and his family. And following the service, uh, you'll have the opportunity to meet him and greet him. And also there will be a door offering to help with uh, his expenses at, ex at the seminary. Also, there is a special voters assembly on Tuesday, June 25th at 7 p.m. to discuss purchasing the property on Oak Street. And then next Sunday at the, at the 1030 service, we will honor Pastor Gall's anniversaries and retirement with a special worship service and a potluck meal following. And so if you plan to be at the meal, you're asked to uh, be sure and it, it, pick up the card, the RSVP card in the atrium and fill it out. Uh, also, uh, you can still give blood up until noon today and, uh, and you'll get a cardinal shirt and if you're not a cardinal fan, you could always take the shirt and sell it to a cardinal fan. <laughs> so, uh, the Golden Eagles will meet this week and if you plan to attend, please sign up today and also sign up to attend the Holiday World event and the stockholders dinner as well. Uh, with that, let us begin the worship service. How deep the Father's love for us beyond all measure that he should give his only son and make a wrench his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mark chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear Boys, call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know. in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection why should I gain from his reward I cannot give an answer I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain 
Father in heaven, we declare your name and praise you. How we praise and revere you, holy God. We will tell of your works and all the good you have done in our lives. Amen. Lord God, we are incredibly blessed to be considered your children. You have promised yourself as an inheritance to us, and one day we will be with you. Father, as we are here on this earth, we ask you to deliver us from evil. And when you unshackle the chains that keep us bound up and locked up, give us courage to spread the good news of what you've accomplished. All glory, honor, and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. Loving Father, we are unmistakably sinful. Giving into our temptations, we become bound by sin, shackled to the lies of the enemy. Free us from this prison. Set us free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We confess our sin to you now. We ask for the freedom that comes with the forgiveness granted us through Jesus Christ, the cross of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven and free by the blood of the Lamb. Alleluia. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 1 through 9. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here I am I, here am I. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in the ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations, a people who constantly provoke me to my very face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold both broth of impure meat, who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. See, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both the sins and sins of your ancestors, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says. As when juice is found in a cluster of grapes and people say, don't destroy it, there is still a blessing in it, so will I do in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them. And there will my servants live. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is found in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23, going to verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 7. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that has come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through th faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all in one, Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery and under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption of sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, and the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. They sailed to the region of Gersenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this to the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people in the region of the Gersenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We declare our faith in the Trinity. Uh, all glory, honor, and power are yours forever and ever. We believe in the God who is boundless and timeless, eternal and infinite, and the creator of everything we see and don't see. He is real unlike any other God and is living. He calls us his children because of the sacrifice of his son. We believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, who died and resurrected on the third day to close the gap between God and man. He is living and cannot be dying. He sets the prisoner free, commands demons to obey, and speaks only truth from the Father. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of truth. He existed as one with God and Christ, in the beginning where he who hovered over the waters. The Holy Spirit protects us, guides us, and moves our hearts toward God. We declare our faith in the Holy Trinity. Amen. You may be seated. Sight, the deaf now hear, the lame we walk, the lost draw near, and with new life, the dead are raised, all through the power, in Jesus' name, the tired find rest. The sick are healed The mysteries of Our God reveal And now the truth Can be proclaimed All through the power In Jesus' name Name above all names Savior and our Lord Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. No other name is given by which we can be 
saved. Let us find our life in love in Jesus' name. Thirsty filled, the hungry fed, and those who mourn are comforted. The chains are broken that have been slaved. We're all for freedom in Jesus' name. find our life in love in Jesus name there is power there is hope there is love like you've never known there's forgiveness and healing from your pain all through the power in Jesus name find our life in love in Jesus name in the name of Jesus amen I'm glad to be with you this morning I know whenever pastor Fort Kemp asked me if I was available to come preach and I gave him a few days that we settled on this date I became excited because this passage from Galatians was actually my baptismal or my confirmation verse back 30 years ago whenever I was confirmed. And I really think this passage, specifically verse 29, is really where we find our hope as Gentile believers. I think it's the linchpin in Paul's theology and his argument against the Judaizers and why we have the hope of God's salvation and are counted as the children of God. So who are God's heirs? Who are the heirs to the promise? Was it a selected people in a small sliver of land through an ethnic lineage and heritage? Or did God have other criteria in mind when he called people to his promised heirs? See, the letter of Galatians was written to an area, what is now modern-day Turkey. Uh, most of Paul's other letters, like Romans and Ephesians, these were written to towns, to specific cities. But the letters of Galatians was written to a churches within this region. In this region, Paul and Barnabas or Silas had gone through and and had preached this message in the people. These Gentiles, they heard this good news and they believed it with their whole heart. And they looked to God and to Jesus as their sole salvation. But there was this group, this group of Judaizers who followed Paul and they seemed to trail him, going right behind him from city to city. And they preached a different gospel. They told these people that it's, it's good that you believe in Jesus, but that's not enough. You need to be circumcised in order to be saved. You need to follow the law of Moses. Then you can be sure that you have salvation. Faith in Jesus just wasn't enough in their eyes. You also needed to do, follow the law. And this, I think, just drove Paul crazy. I think it really got under his skin. As he says in the beginning verse, 
in uh, chapter 1 of the letter to Galatians, he says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. And that's what Paul is really writing this whole letter of Galatians was to contradict these Judaizers who were trying to put these Gentile believers back under the law. Here Paul really came forward and the cornerstone of his whole argument was, are you saved by faith in Christ or by following the law? Which is it? It can't be both. So in verse 23, he starts out with what I imagine was just a stark, unbelievable claim in the ears of these Judaizers. Paul says, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to be revealed. And I really think that's what Paul was talking about when he says, this is no gospel at all that these Judaizers are bringing to you to put you back under the law. You see, the law was an overseer, kind of a, a prison warden, or the word that Paul uses in verse 24, a guardian. The Greek word translated here as guardian is pedagogus, and that may sound familiar to us if, if we think of the word pedagogue. A pedagogue is, is a kind of teacher in our language. It uh, brings forth images of a strict stern educator you know whenever i think of that i think of the old looney tunes cartoons remember they'd always show the teacher wearing his his cap and gown from graduation and coming in with a big ruler whacking the kids desks as he tries to instruct them in the way to teach it's just this strong strict uh, stiff kind of educator and that's similar to the idea that paul brings forth here but it's slightly different, would have had a different meaning to the hearers of Paul's letter. See, this, this illustration was, uh, was common. The idea of the pedagogue in the Roman Empire was this, was this slave who was entrusted, an older slave, entrusted by the family to look after this young son as he grows up. The pedagogue observed the son as he as he went about making sure he went to school, watching his behavior on the way, making sure he behaved properly. He wasn't really a teacher as much as uh, an overseer, I think is, is the best word. He, he, he made sure the child behaved, and if the child got out of hand, the pedagogue was free to exhort some discipline to get the child back in line. Often that discipline was very strict, very severe. So much so that this life under this guardian, this pedagogue, was, was very structured. It was very curtailed and had no freedom at all. So much so that the child just longed for the day that he could be free to live his life the way he wanted. Because in the Roman Empire, the child didn't have the same rights that we, we think of today. He didn't have the rights of an adult. Even though he might be the inheritor to the entire estate, until the day that his father deemed him worthy, he was seen as really nothing much more than a slave. Watched by this pedagogue to make sure that he stayed in line and grew up to become a, a good man. So from about the age of six until about, usually around the age 17 or 18, this child was under this watchful eye this enforcing eye of this pedagogue. But then the day finally came whenever the father would, would deem his son worthy, would call him a man, and, and then on his day of uh, officially coming of age ceremony, the father would bring him before the community. The father would bring this son, who he used to see as nothing more than a slave, but who would show that he is his adopted son, and he would, the son would inherit gain all the inheritance rights and become fully recognized as the rightful heir within this Roman family to this vast fortune. So that's what Paul is really using. That he's using that metaphor to bring forth life before when we lived in the law with life in the freedom of Christ. 
So in chapter 4, he uses this image of the pedagogue to describe this contradicting lifestyles. While under the law, one was not recognized as a child and heir, but in the Father's time, through the redemptive life of Christ, Christ born of a woman, born under the law, we have become God's children. We are adopted into his family and no longer are we a slave to sin in the, under the law, but we are God's child. And since his child, your daddy, your Abba, your father, he recognizes you as an heir centered on Christ. So what is our coming of age ceremony? What is, how did we became, become heirs to Christ's righteousness? It happened to us in the baptismal font. Whenever we come and we are baptized into Christ, faith and trust in God's promise is given to us. The Holy Spirit indwells our hearts and we gain that same faith that Abraham had so long ago. In baptism, we die to ourselves and we are washed in the water, in the blood of Christ. And just as Jesus said, one who believes and is baptized will be saved. So in baptism, we are delivered from sin, death, and the devil. And the power, the benefit, the real purpose of baptism is that we are united with Christ in his holy work, his work on the cross. We are united with him in his death, buried into that tomb. We are united with him in his resurrection. We are promised of the eternal life, life from the dead. So in baptism, as Paul says in verse 27, we are really clothed in Christ. So we are connected and we become Abraham's seed through our faith in Christ. We are heirs according to the promise. So God's chosen children were not confined to this geographical area of Israel. One doesn't have to be from the genealogical heritage and be found in Abraham's tree to be counted as a heir of the promise. No. No, rather, we are God's chosen nation. As Peter says in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 7, he says, So the honor is for you who believe. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. At our baptism, God calls us, and we become that chosen race, that royal priesthood and holy nation then, in faith in Jesus. He made you his own beloved child, and he recognizes you as an heir and welcomes you to all of that rich inheritance in life in heaven. Not by our perfect works or by observing the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So now that we are free from that custodial care, that guardianship of the law, does that mean we're free to live however we want? Or does it mean that we should live differently? That we should live set apart from the rest of the world? That we should live and our lives should reflect that we are the children of God? So I invite you to think about those images, that idea of being a child of God. To be clothed in Christ, what does that mean? How does that affect our daily living? How should it show out and play out throughout the rest of our lives? One way I think this, this freedom of being a child of God, one way I think it can show out is in how we share that responsibility, this love of Christ with others. In our work, work as though you're working unto the Lord, Paul says. If you're in school, do all of your schoolwork. Treat, show that love of Christ with all of your classmates, with those who have no friends. If you're a neighbor, if you have good neighbors, you know, just be a good neighbor. Mow their lawn, help them in with groceries, just do little things, little small acts of kindness that this, this love one another, as Christ calls us to do. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two most important commandments. So, Look, look at everyone here in this room. These are your brothers, your sisters in Christ. And let this love show between each other. Let it overflow throughout this 
throughout your everyday life, outside of these four walls of this church, let it go into your everyday life. Paul tells us that the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let that be the model for your life. Let the world know that we are Christians by our love. You know, I'm reminded of some of the residents. I, I work at a senior living home for my vicarage, and, and some of the residents there have been lifelong Christians, raised in the church, and even though they may have advanced stages of dementia, you can still see the love of Christ in their life. It's just begin to talk with them. Their faces light up, and a joyous smile overtakes them, and you can just see the love of Christ in their life. And I'm also reminded of, of Christians from far-off lands who are where it's maybe illegal to be a Christian, and they get arrested. They put in jail for their faith in Christ. But they still bring this love, this faith in Christ, into, their, into the prison captain. And many of their captors, their jailers, are turned and become Christians too because they just don't understand how someone is arrested in jail can be joyous and happy. But it's because they have the love of Christ in their life that, that it overflows throughout the rest of their life. And that's really our mission from Jesus, to go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Peter finishes that, first, uh, that quote from 1 Peter chapter 2. He says that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and the reason is so that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. So let your show light show shine before the world. You know, Jesus calls us to be the light in the world, that they may see our good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So I invite you to go forth this week to show your neighbor, your boss, your friends, your whole community that you are the adopted children of a heavenly father. Not based on your own merits, not based on how well you do things, but because of the, how well Christ has done, because of his good work on the cross, because we are baptized and we have that Holy Spirit and we become heirs to the promise. And because of this, we have the right to call him Abba, Daddy, our Heavenly Father. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, be with you all, brothers and sisters. Amen. We now receive our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
Dear Heavenly Father, place your wise hand upon the nations of the earth. Give them leaders who seek after justice and peace. And lead all people to the freedom of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, lift up all those who are weighed down by the guilt and shame of sin. Release them from their bondage and point them to forgiveness at the feet of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, walk with those who are grieving in the shadow of death. We ask that you would look upon the families of Ruby Gessler and Glenn Lewis, both of who have been called from this life, and give them comfort with the hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, strengthen all those who are fighting against the power of Satan. Remind them of your presence in your word and sacraments. Empower them to resist Satan's lies with the truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give hope to all who are isolated and lonely. Bring them into the presence of the loving community of your church that they find help and hope among your people. Lord, in your mercy, look, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. And we especially ask that you would look upon Pastor Gall in regards to his heart issue and, and uh, diabetes. Be with Beulah Ziegler and Justin Norris and Rebecca Belcher and Marvin Tappendorf and Vi Kirchhoff and Nine, Nancy Onisorge and Brett Cool, all who are recovering and recuperating and we ask that you'd be with Ellen Tinges who has me medical issues and be with Bob Miller who is in the hospital and we thank you for uh, Keith Barnes receiving the uh, message that he is cancer free and we thank you that you also look upon all of our loved ones and would ask that you would be with our neighbors and friends who are in need of your healing touch and have mercy upon them and heal them according to your will Lord in your mercy and we ask almighty and gracious God that you would be with Caden uh, Keener who will be going on a mission trip uh, with other youth and we ask that you would bless this time and make it a time of spiritual growth and be with Reverend John Schultz who is considering the call to be senior pastor here at St. John's. We ask and also to remain at uh, his present place. We ask that you would fill him with your spirit and give him the wisdom uh, to make the decision that would be in accord with your will. We commend this to your loving and gracious care. Lord, in your mercy. And dear Heavenly Father, send your people to every corner of the earth with your gospel message that all who do not know the saving power of your Son's death and resurrection hear the good news of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And whatever else we have upon our hearts and minds, we bring to you in the prayer that Jesus taught our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We gather as one body in unity to break bread. This broken body was beaten and crushed for the remission of our sins. We drink of the cup and remember the Lord's sacrifice. This cup is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was spilled to the covers of sin. We celebrate our, your Holy Supper, Lord, with gratitude and reverence. We long for your return. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We now have the Lord's Supper. You may be seated. May the Lord bless you and your family with his goodness, love, and mercy. And may we share what the Lord has done for those around us. Tell the world what Jesus has done. Renew your hearts and minds in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So aimless, life filled with sin I wouldn't let my tears stagger in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow Like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then, like a blind man, the God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy and sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wonder astray. For straight is gate and narrow is the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy to sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. We are happy to have with us our adopted seminary students.